Welcome to Rugby I'm here on Free Sports Back. Once again, it's an early start today. Got Jamie Jones Buchanan on my left hand side, Rangi Chase and Kyle Hall from Doncaster, and also the vice president of the RFL. We'll start with you, Carl, because uh, it's, you've had an interesting journey in rugby league. Tell us, give us a bit of the rugby league background of Carl Hall. Oh, like anyone, I come over here to try and play, and 30 years later, I'm still here. 30 years. So, where, so where did you where did you come from? What where, where did it all start for you? Over here, over there in New Zealand, um, Mount Albert. Obviously, me and Kevin Iro and and those sort of blokes and name dropping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good mate of mine. Um, and then we ca I came over on the Junior Kiwi tour in, <coughs> in I think it was 1988. Um, I thought, gee, it's all right over here. Um, Love the the way the crowds got into it and all that sort of stuff and. Uh, we were playing uh, Canterbury against Auckland one night and me and my roomie just started ringing up all the clubs in England to try and get back. <laughs> and within an hour, Donny had rang back and wanted us. So I think Tony Kemp had been here in um, 87, 86 and just went from there. The next day we we didn't really know what to do. So they said, oh, we want to fax you a contract through. So we went to the coach, Frank Endicott. He says, oh, can we get a... Can we get a contract fixed to your work? <laughs> <laughs> so we fixed it through, and we and that was it. Me and uh, a bloke called Andrew Vincent came over. Doncaster's like the final outpost, isn't it, as far as going south of Yorkshire. Once you get past Doncaster, rugby league starts to dissipate a little bit. So how's it, how's it changed around, Donny, since when you first went there all those years ago to sort of now? Oh, well, obviously, we all know Doncaster's thriving at the moment. You know, it's got the big flash stadium that you know, they, they promised me all them years ago to keep signing me that we're going in the new stadium. They never did, and they're in it now. It's changed a lot, you know, the stadium. <coughs> it's got the, the airport there. Big transformation and from Donny from when I first came. It's huge. First time I ever played at Keymore Stadium was in a Challenge Cup semi-final against <coughs> Castleford, <laughs> where they set an only chase scored. I think almost a full-length try up that left wing. Um, how have you found your time at Do Donny, obviously, since... Going back there and playing there. I love it, man. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Just starting to find my feet now. Um, obviously, when we played Jews and I missed the drop goal, <laughs> he was offside by a country mile. <laughs> <laughs> the, ref, the ref didn't pull it up. You, Danny Baderas, and Jamie Peacock were offside, I think. Put kick pressure on me, so I missed it because he was offside. But anyway. <laughs> I remember scoring the try that got pulled back for four pass as well, mate. So it's a different story, yeah. Wrong, so. but. <laughs> but lucky, yeah. Lucky we didn't win because I had to catch a flight to Australia. I had a court case going on, so I just I just caught my fight within five minutes. If I was five minutes late, because I probably would have got men in a match. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because Wella Rocky, obviously, I think he's a good yeah, mate of yours, yeah. and he told us all week, Rang is definitely yeah, not playing. Because yeah. nah. I'll go back to Australia, I spoke to him, and he turned yeah, up, yeah. he's on team sheet. <laughs> he he didn't him. talk to me for about two weeks after that. Did he not? Because I was meant to, I was meant to go. Because I said, man, I've got to go home to this court case thing. And uh, he's like, bro, are you playing? I said, nah, nah, because I'm not playing. But then my coach said, don't tell anyone you're playing. I said, man, I've just told my me and them were close. So I just told my brother, I'm, I'm not playing. Yeah. And he goes, mate, you can't tell him. I was like, oh. So I've rocked up to the game and he's looked at me and he's given me proper evils, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's running he's after me the whole game. Uh, yeah. And afterwards he's like, you told me, he gave it to me. <laughs> so I said, oh, sorry, man, I wasn't allowed to play it. But I was genuinely thought I was going to go. But they changed it like two days before game. No, you have to stay, just please play, just beg me to play, so I had to play. One of the biggest stories this year, when obviously you came back from your ban, and you chose to play for Doncaster. Yeah. Like, I know you were going to play for Normie, Normie yeah, Knights. Yeah, yeah. Why Doncaster? Oh, my man. Just, just, just <laughs> no, because of he, he, he rang me up because I was, uh, like, I just wanted to play rugby. I, I wasn't bothered about playing Super League or anything like that. I just wanted to tuck the boots on and just have, have a bit of fun. And he's rang me up and goes, bro, are you, I heard that you were going to play for Normie or something like that. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to play for fun, and he goes, just come and do it for Donny. I said, OK. Uh, <laughs> sort it out. And then th that was it. And looking at League One, obviously, we speak about League One every week on the Our League app. 
it's it's a tight league this year. It's an exciting league, and anyone can literally beat anyone. And Whitehaven have probably just been that little bit more consistent than all the other teams. They look like they're going to win the league. Mm. And then it's a bit of a lottery between Newcastle, Oldham, yourselves, potentially Hunslet as well, Workington. Who who don't you want to play? Who, who would you like to see get out of the out of the old uh, playoffs in an early stage? Well, it doesn't matter. Do you reckon you can beat anyone? Because I think you can. If the boys turn up and play how they can play, they can beat anyone. They know that. Yeah. It's just um, it's up to them. You know, yeah. They, they're a, we've got a good side. Uh, we proved that we, you know, Sheffield. We we give Sheffield a real good game. We bet Batley. Probably better off playing. You know, we play a bit better when we play championship teams. Yeah. The League One, it's a dog fight. You, you've got to fight. You've got to be mentally strong. That's the difference. It's a, it's a mental battle as more as a physical battle in the League One. What would happen for the club if you got to Championship this year? Uh, it'll kick on. The yeah. club would, uh, the club would go places. Obviously, we've got, you know, real successful owners and uh, and real wealthy owners, but they didn't get there by throwing the money about. So they make you work for every penny they give you. Um, but I do know if we go up, that 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 back the club and you know we'd probably hopefully look to go go full time in, in the in the near, near future wow other talking points this weekend Bradford rang it last game ever at Odsall yeah. he's sad yeah. to see it go yeah well I don't really yeah I, I'm good mates with Jake and I've seen it on his um, social media they're a big club aren't they they've done a lot in the game so it's, it's a bit of a shame they're going to go and be housed at Dewsbury for the next two seasons Cal is that a crime is it a crime? Because it, it feels like a crime. Obviously, I played for Bradford, so it's a it's a sad time for that club. Um, what's gone wrong? Nobody knows. Um, but great stadium. Um, it's a sad day for for Bradford if they if they are going to leave there for good. I don't seem like there's any any way out currently. I know that there's. Bradford Park Avenue being speak, spoken about as a venue, but you get you come up with some great ideas last week to to hopefully get Oddsall going again as a potential national stadium at North Jones. I think it's a great venue, isn't it? And yeah. it's got its history and heritage deeply rooted in rugby league. Mm. Um, you know, there's been some Challenge Cup final replays played there, and I'm not sure if there's been other finals, but just where, where Wembley's gone over recent years, you know, is it time to bring the Challenge Cup final back to mm. North and Phil, live within our means, fill the stadium rather than having to drag everybody out way down yeah, yeah. to Wembley. I want to keep it at Wembley, of course I do, but the first 40 years of the Challenge Cup was played up north and mm. I think is a, a bit of a centre of excellence as well, International Rugby League, Wheelchair Rugby League, Men's Rugby League, Women's, LDRL, PDRL. It could be a real venue right in the centre of the um, Rugby League fraternity where we could bring the whole game together. Uh, don't want Bradford to leave. I want to see a really strong Bradford playing in Super League League. And I can't control that. Fans can't control that. So use uh, use Bradford as a as a great venue. What does your role entail uh, as vice chairman of the RFL? It's just an honorary a role. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got my my thoughts on you know what I want to make the vice president of the vice pres presidency. I'd you know the enjoy the game and you know respect and all that sort of stuff and. Also, I'll be uh, do a lot with Luke Gale with the kicking for grassroots and you know the RFL um, ambassador for the legacy funding. So, go to all these new facilities. I'm I'm a big big believer in we need to look after the the bottom um, and nurture the kids coming through. And I've said it all along that you know it, it, it's our duty to give them a decent facility. You know we certainly want to wouldn't want our kids to go to a rugby league club. Um, where the mum can't go to the toilet, uh, yeah. the kids can't have a, a wash after the training session. So I genuinely believe it's our duty to provide them the facilities and then it's the club's duties will then get the kids in and they'll all respect and look after the facility. So I'm a big believer, let's get the kids the facilities and let's get the next superstars of the game um, from the grassroots. Talk to me about uh, Tony Adams. So Tony Adams gets announced and, and a few people are like, Tony Adams, Rugby League? It's great profile, obviously, reaching out to the sport and when he when he came on board, I, I remember seeing it on the, the debate on one Monday night's football. Um, so it, it's great PR from a PR perspective, but what's he bringing? 
Oh, I share a lot of his values. Um, what, what we've got to remember, he's quite passionate about our sport. One thing Tony Adams um, has brought to our sport, which is, uh, is this fellow knows, uh, he's, he's tripped uh, the over 400 rugby league players have been in his clinic. Yeah. That's a huge stat. Um, you know, for 400, and that's, 400. How, that's how good they are. Yeah. And, and with the confidentiality and all that, we don't even know that there have been 400 rugby league players go through his clinic. Uh, so I think it's, it's huge. And we talked about it on the way here, and it, it was massive. For, you can ask him, it was massive for him. Well, what was it like, spotting chance from? Did it, did it, el did it yeah. really help you? Yeah, it really helped me at the time, because I went for a time where I was, you know, getting a bit out of hand. So you win Man of Steel? I end up in spotting chance. Yeah, I was just drinking a lot, drinking yeah. too much. It got, got to a point where it got out of hand. So I had to do something about it and obviously went to sporting chance and it, you know, it helped me. I met Tony personally yeah. and uh, he's a top lad, but a lot of people been there. Obviously it's confidential. We don't want to talk about who's been there, but yeah. at that time in my life I needed it. Talking of profile, it gets no bigger than Prince Harry. Now I've heard you've got him on speed dial. Is that uh, correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. Um, it was an absolute honour to meet him. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, I'm not putting myself down, but from from where I've come to to go and meet someone like Prince Harry was amazing, and you know I'm not ashamed to say that he he was a real genuine nice fella and. And again, knew, knew a bit about the game as well. Well, I said, does he know much about rugby league? Yeah, obviously, he, he knew. What's obviously, he knows, he knows Tony Adams. Yeah. And I think he, he felt comfortable in the surroundings he was, and he was just genuine, you know. He, was, he could see that the boys were tired down there, and he was saying, gee, look at the big fellow down there. That heat must be getting to him. He's tired. And he knew, he knew the game. He watches rugby and rugby league, so he, it was good. It was an honour. It's great that, as well, we have proper royalty giving the cup over. It gives it real credence. Yeah, certainly with Wembley, I think we've had for a lot of years, it goes back, doesn't it, where yeah. the Queens come and give the Challenge Cup and it's good to have genuine frontline royalty mm. there to do it. And it's, it's a real honour. I'm, I'm a big wireless man, I love that type of thing. It um, goes right back to medieval days for me. But uh, I did have the pleasure of meeting him at Edinburgh a couple of years ago, maybe 18 months ago now, uh, with a Sky Tri event, and uh, he was very down to earth, yeah. doing his stuff, and it's great to have him involved. Yeah. Jonesy, you're retiring next year. Will you be playing a bit more golf? Because I've tried to get you on the golf course before. You aren't being a big fan. Any inclination next year to go I've to golf? Have you thought about what you're going to do in your retirement yet? I'm retiring in about 10 days, mate. <laughs> um, no, I won't be going golfing. If no. I've got a date away, so I like to go fishing, mate. Yeah. That's one of my next goals. I'm going to win Fishing Mania. I'm definitely going to win some fishing competitions. <laughs> I'm already saying I've won one. This You've won one this I've year, yeah. Marion's yeah. fishing comp up his backside earlier this year. Um, that was great fun. I love it. Let's go over to Kirkstall Training Ground as the Leeds Rhinos boys take on the Seafast Play Pro Longest Drive Challenge. Check this out. John Lund, Booker. Oh, that's a good one. Put your teeth up. Oh! It's got a bit of movement. It's got oh, oh, it's got a bit of movement, man. Easy to do, Roll on. Oh, that's good. 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 Oh, Hey, it's a bones, my boy. Liam Sutcliffe, utility. Okay then. Oh, oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Bounce again. You that to Bradford? No, I know he's like a giant spoon there. Ash Winger. This is for you, Harriet. Thank you, Harriet. Oh! 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 Oh!
Special offer of Warren. Yeah. Special officer Warren. Yeah. Uh, Warren. Yeah. Oh, 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 Second one, I hit that machine. Oh, no, 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 Come on, go this way. the second time I ever hit golf ball? Oh, Richie Myler, halfway. Oh, 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 that's Mr. Gilmore's jacket, sir. <laughs> Go on, Jeff. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> Nice one. Oh, heads up. <laughs> I got something to work with then, 54 meters. That is a strip. That's a cool one, mate. Oh, you know the good one. You don't get a huh? 227. That's it. That's it. Up and under. <laughs> Jared O'Connor, loose forward. Uh, Sam Otler's back row. Real extension. Oh, Reese Martin, second row. Chris Black, Milford Marlin, swing. Good lad. <laughs> European tour, yeah. pro. <laughs> Come on. 
Yeah, you're in. Miles off. Jonesy Alex Morell, tell us a bit about him because he's gone to the top of the leaderboard, contentious that a member of staff has, has got the top of the league. Yeah, well, uh, Some as players are going to go mad, but you know, well, everyone has a go. Listen, if they're the rules, then it should be just players. But as far as I'm aware, all staff, all clubs get an opportunity <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah. It's rugby league. Everybody's there. And Part Alex, of the squad. Alex Morell is about nine foot tall, weighs about 30 stone. Just a big lad, not overweight. <laughs> Played a bit of uh, rugby with him from Hull. Uh, and he's a great physio. His missus actually plays for... The Leeds Rhinos women's team as well, so he's very deeply integrated yeah. in a rugby league, and he just come and smash the ball out of the park. Three hundred and three, big, effort, yeah. big, awful very big. Idea. It was awful. It's, I've seen uh, social media has blown up this week. Um, Salford winning uh, against Warrington for the third time this season, yeah. and people saying, "Oh, Salford could win Super League," <laughs> and uh, John Bateman said, "There's more chance of platin." <laughs> this morning John on Bateman from yeah from Canberra he says we're gonna gonna win it so it's, it's this the banter has started now about who's gonna win Super League if you had a ten pounds put on now who's gonna win Super League where'd your ten pound go in? well I'm not a gambling man Simo as you know but um, I I think Wigan are gonna be a serious threat yeah I don't know how much damage the Challenge Cup final done to St Helens yeah. I don't know if Warrington have got the legs because they've dropped off immensely in the yeah. league and don't seem to have much coming back. Yeah. Um, all I see are always a danger, but Wigan seem to be the team that's gone under the radar and are quietly confident and climbing. And it's always had that mental toughness to get in a, a deep battle. Yeah. And you know, we've seen from the <coughs> final when you drag Saints into a battle, you never know. Um, so Wigan, and if an outside bet, you'd have to go with Wigan. But, but. Salford, <laughs> if Salford won it, can you imagine? Where's Salford coming? The, 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 the moment, the third, aren't they? Third, yeah. Now it's time to go to Bachelor's Amateur Try of the Week, and I love this part of the show because you get kids coming up to you all over saying, I run that, and this little lad uh, coloured me outside Wembley, and I think his try is one of the tries of the season so far. Right. And then I was at uh, Phil Bennett's do yesterday, and this guy comes and says, I've got a story for you. The best rugby league story. Leeds Spartans, they won the, the amateur try of the week last week. The, the that amazing try by that girl. Yeah. He said, it's all girls. The club's all girls. We've got the eights, we've got the tens, we've got twelves, fourteens, sixteens. And then we've got um, a, a development team. I went, what, all girls? He went, yeah. It's amazing. I went, you've got all girls? He went, I've got three boys. I went, well, it's not a story then. <laughs> 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 he went, you've deflated me now. But we know it's a great story. They know seriousness, though. Leeds patterns in. To have all girls all those ages, yeah. and especially the young ones as well, it's quite special. That. It's really special, mate. I mean, girls quite often play with boys, don't they? Yeah. Until about uh, under 12s. Uh, but the amateur chat week this year has been phenomenal for me, and it's great that we get so much... Uh, feedback and engagement in that. Check this out, Bachelor's Amateur Try of the Week. Seen the tries, Jones in Rangi. Who is the winner? <coughs> Rangi has chosen Lewis Moulton of Ince Rosebridge under sevens. It's a great try. I'm a bit concerned because to me it looked like somebody was filming a television 
So Lewis Moulton might be 12 years old now, I don't know. <laughs> that could have been an old one. It was a good try and you've won just because the legend over there, Ronnie the Chase, says that you're the winner. And you're going to win that ball. Yeah, you're going to win that ball. Oh, yours. In the post, in the post. Right now, it's time to finish part one, but we'll see you back here for more rugby in part two. Keep it locked. Welcome back to Rugby M here, part two on Free Sports. So with Jamie Jones, Buchanan, Kyle Hall and Rangy Chase. This week, massive momentous day, uh, the War of the Roses. Oh, to get the players we got together and obviously celebrating your career and, and Gilly's career, what a night. It, it, it couldn't have actually gone any better. No, it was outstanding. The, 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 the crowd was brilliant. Yeah. Right? Decent numbers, great atmosphere. It sounded like there were twice as many people yeah. there. The two lineups were sensational, and I still have to pinch myself. I think, did I just dream that? Yeah. You know, some of the photographs that I've come back since, my favourite was with Martin Afire, looking like he's just won another Challenge Cup final. Yeah. It was just brilliant. Uh, and and the, whole corporate, the whole thing, the yeah. event was sensational. And I'll be honest with you, that afternoon, I had some mad anxiety. We were yeah. talking about pressure. I didn't sleep that before. It, it felt like it, it was just about to go out and play a grand final because there was so much that we couldn't control and so much effort that had gone into planning the event but it turned out really well and I've been on cloud nine uh, ever since for the last, uh, last seven days. It was a good event and if you was there, thank you very much. I can't thank you enough. The kids that come for the Junior Festival, the fans that turned up and obviously the players because, I mean, Stu Fielding had to have a lot <laughs> of <aesthetic. laughs> he had, he had a jab in his knee before the game. And that's how committed the boys were to coming out and playing. And they were brilliant. The quality of the game was fantastic. Lee Breeze, Scully, the, the lot of them played really, really well. He walked in, Stu Fielding, and he goes, where's the doctor? And I'm thinking, well, he bought some, like, some anti-inflams or something. The next minute, he's got a needle straight in his knee. Well, the, the problem with rugby league is, right, when you're an older player, it's not like the type of game where you can come and have a knockabout, is it? Mm. The the fifty percent of the game is contact. You know, yeah. it's, it's tackling. So it, it's really difficult to get those boys to commit. But once they're there, oh, they're like yeah. over the moon. And afterwards, there's so many of them. John James tore his bicep. Like most people, his biceps come up here. It's ricocheted up here, and he's like, <laughs> strap it up, just strap it up. So he's like, all right, eh? Strap it up, carry on. They're insane. The mad old school generational yeah, uh, yeah, players. Yeah. Coming back, mate. They just don't build them like that anymore. That would be awesome. Uh, um, unbelievable. They said they'll never play again um, until next You're year. You're gonna keep a, like a yearly thing. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try our best, and that obviously comes down to the fans' appetite. If people yeah. want to come and watch it, but of course they will. Yeah. Everybody who was there was spoke to since, and uh, you know some of the social media feedback's been outstanding. Uh -huh. Everybody said they had a really good time. Uh, yeah, check this out. It's the War of the Roses 2019. This is unbelievable. It's finally here, Yorkshire versus Lancashire. War the Roses, Jonesy, you're in your Yorkshire kit, proud as punch, mate. Some absolute legends have come out, turned out today for this game, celebrating the careers of yourself and Gilly. Mate, it's one of the most emotional days of my life. I don't, I'm not kidding. And I, I think after training this afternoon, it dawned on me that there's going to be three or four events when I have to stand formally and say thank you to people for, for what they've given me over the last 20, 22 years and the opportunities I, I've had to go on the journey that I've been on and fulfill my potential essentially and with such grace and with a deep debt of gratitude I've got to say thank you not just to people like Martin Afire and Jesse Robinson and Paul Sculthorpe those guys who've turned out to come and play in this awesome game this great event that's been going through a lot of preparation last month back at my hometown my hometown of Leeds at Endless Stadium which has been my second home surrounded by so many young kids enjoying themselves just like I did I was so emotional because I'm really, really grateful and I just want to say thank you to everybody out there that supported me, supported my family, supported my friends and, and given me the opportunity. I can't pay you all back, but I promise to pay it forward and give whatever opportunities I can to that next generation and support and inspire them. Well, let's get in the change room, go meet the madman of Wagga who's going to take us round and meet some of the legends on show today. Heading behind enemy lines into the Lancashire dressing room. So go have a little room. Oh, some real legends scully over there, the boys. Right, there's one guy. Look how fast them legs look. Look at them. Martin of fire behind enemy lines. Are you ready, Martin? No, I just feel like I'm getting a really old sports car out that's could, potentially could break down at any minute. Even trying to get through the massage is pretty tough at the moment, so. Who, who are you looking forward to playing with again, Martin, in I your might, team? I might just give Robbo a slap. 
but, it, but in my team, I'm looking forward to playing with Scully. I mean, there's some youngsters in our team. There's some people that are 29. I think I scored my try at Wembley when I'm 29. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it, kind of. Um, it's been a while playing a, a full contact game. It's not how, uh, how Jonesy and Gilly sold it. I think it was, a, it was supposed to be a bit more light-hearted than, than no doubt it's going to be, so... Uh, looking forward to it, you know, two great lads and I, I'm here purely just to, to support them two guys. Yeah, if, if there's anybody to um, have got my eye on, on my elbow, it's probably Gilly. Gilly, the dressing room in the Yorkshire area is pumping. Absolutely. Are you ready? Uh, we're ready, of course we are. Look at the atmosphere. The Yorkshire boys are buzzing here early, preparing right. These Lancashire boys are getting this up. Are they having it? Are they having it? I've just been in there, they look relaxed. Martin the fire is just having a massage, looking nice and relaxed. Well, listen, they want to do it that way. We'll get pumped. We'll, we'll, we'll bring the pump. They can stay relaxed and see what they bring. Back in the Lancashire dressing room. And Robbo's in as well. <laughs> Robbo, what's happening? Uh, just on a bit of a spying mission at the moment. Yeah, they're looking good. People are coming in all the time. We've got a guy over here. Michael Platt. Platt, hey! <laughs> Look at the size of him! You're looking better, Nick, than when you play. I know. <laughs> John and Jane, easy! Look at the size of that, well. They're not toys, them. Oof. Chuffy now. What's he been eating? Machine. You, that's a move. You in a bit. Come on. Run a bit. Oh, better leave now. Better leave now. Cass is getting serious. Cass. Right. Don't split me again, Matt. Don't split. Don't split me again, Matt. I can't handle any more cuts. What's it like to play with all these legends again? Because change room's looking good. Change room's looking good. I think it's going to be a um, Lancashire win tonight. You've got some size. Yeah, most definitely. We'll spot you out middle. Split me or spot me? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> Baz, pitch side. What's it going to be like getting back on there against Yorkshire? Uh, Headingly uh, as Headingly. well. The last time I played for, for Lancashire, I was skipper and, and lifted the trophy wagon. Wow, I didn't know wow, that. wow. And I haven't <laughs> lost to Yorkshire as a county, in a county match. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Lots of familiar faces, lots of uh, lots of lads who've aged really well, and then Keith, who's aged really badly. <laughs> you've got Michael Platt and Jordan James in there. Yeah. They, they look better than when they played. You've, you've got a million a dollars. Squad, you? Yeah, I think uh, the Lancashire lads as a whole have been keeping themselves in better yeah. nick than the Yorkies. Yeah. We have got one thing in common, Baz. We love our teeth, yes. don't we? We're, yours yeah. are a lot lighter than mine. They are. One thing I it's want just good brushing that, though, you know. <laughs> it is just brushing. I don't want to lose these. <laughs> I don't know about you. Oh, I don't no. want to lose teeth tonight. I just want to smash each other and just get off the field in one piece. Yeah. Will I that think, happen? Well, hopefully, I think that's what we're all telling each other, that as long as we walk on and walk <laughs> off in the same state, even if you limp on and limp off, so hopefully we look after each other and... Give the crowd a bit of something to laugh at and uh, some entertainment, and we've got good, some good rugby players, haven't we? Oh, we've got some talent. some fast players. I'm looking forward to Robbo against yeah. uh, Jason Robinson against the Fire. That's yeah. a that's Great a battle man. that never actually took place. Did that one? My, mine and Stu's is 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 long worn, isn't it? We've <laughs> we've had about three thousand of them. Well, who are you looking forward to playing up against in the Lancashire set? I've not particularly seen. I know. I, I think Baz is playing. Yeah. Um, Chariots. But... If we could catch him, He's still got pace. <laughs> it's, it's the one, mate. It's the one. It's whoever. I just hope I get through warm-up. Yeah. I've not run for six and a half years. For six and a half years? Yeah. Mechanically, I can do it. It's the, it's the knee, so... Uh, for, for me, Stuart, why? Why are you putting them boots back on? Gilly, I spoke, to, I spoke to Robbo when he came here, right? So I said, Robbo, why, why are you playing? His, his, his hips his are naft. Um, he looks like he's sat down, but he's actually stood up. He's, he's, very, <laughs> uh, he's very tall. And, and I said, what are you doing, mate? And he went... Eh. Gilly got into me, Gilly got into me, and it's the exact same point. Yeah. Gilly just got into me, and Gilly has a way. Yeah. He's like partial magician or something, Hi hypnosis possibly, and I've ended up saying, yeah. The amount of a statue in London, but he's now on my patch, <laughs> the mighty Leeds, Yorkshire. In Lancashire, is he? No, I played. You've never played for Yorkshire. What's worse I played for Lancashire before. No, I haven't. But I was born in Yorkshire. So I wasn't born why in would you? Why would you be born down south and then claim Lancashire? Do you know what I mean? Surely you must want to play it's for just Yorkshire. A bit like state this is what it's no. about. It's state of origin. Listen. Anyway, you're going to get smashed. I've told you. You might have a statue down in London. <laughs> but this is my patch, and you're getting smashed. Mate. I'm not. I'm not. 
Well, I'm not worried about you. <laughs> what, what I'm worried about is I saw Barry McDermott in the change room before. I got a little bit excited. Yeah. And I spilt his coffee all over his pants. <laughs> so I'm a little bit nervous. You'll be all right, mate. Can he still fight? Fight? Can he still fight? I don't what? need to fight, mate. Not you. I know you can't fight. I don't need to fight, mate. What about Barry? Is Barry going to be up for it tonight? Barry will always be able to fight. Should we set something up, Barry and Stuart? No. I'm not Should saying we? anything up, mate. I'm not getting involved in anything. I'm just trying to get off that pitch in five minutes without being hurt. That's all I'm worried about. I'm no, it should be a good night. I'm coming. 20 years, Jamie Joe's Buchanan, Lee Gilmore. I think I've been retired 20 years. <laughs> it's not all about you. <laughs> We're talking about other people. <laughs> hey? Do you want two microphones? <laughs> no. One's fine, that's enough. Just, just wasted. wasted. Sorry, he's wasted the interview. It's just all about Martin. It's not all about me. Let's talk about all the tries you've scored there. OK, then. We'll be that. <laughs> we'll be here a while. We'll be here a while. Didn't you want to score ten? <laughs> Who was mate, it against? If I get one today, I'll be happy, mate. Who was it against, sir? I can't remember. <laughs> Some Yorkshire team. <laughs> Leeds. <laughs> You're going to get booed and spat on out here. Norman, you just heard it announced there, got the first try, Smuggy, and uh, it's great to have him down with Luke Robinson in the half backs there. Some of the younger boys there uh, kicking off was uh, was pretty cool. I don't, I'm not happy about how far it went. I wish I'd have got a bit further than 20, but uh, I have torn my quad off my knee in the past, and I don't want to do that in the last three weeks of my career. God willing, I'll get another game before end of the season uh, and finish it off well. But I did kick off. The reason why we've got sand is because we were talking about kicking tees earlier, but back in the day we didn't have kicking tees, did we? We uh, we had sand, we had a bucket of sand, or even before then, just kick it in the floor. But I don't think the groundsman here at Edinburgh had appreciated shape my back heel in flooring so we opted for some. Lee Briggs just scored an interception try, scrum on the 20 metre, came from nowhere, Kyle has been sick in his mouth and had to swallow it because he's a fake Yorkshireman. Great fun now, you know, it's either get an interception or make a tackle and you know I don't like making tackles so the, the interception was the easiest part. I, I seen I seen Raz Hudson, I seen what he was gonna do and uh, I give him a bit of an eye bluff, a bit of pokers, and then uh, as if he didn't think I was gonna do it and then you know he passed it to me so it was, it was good fun. It's good to score in uh, Edinburgh again. It's probably up there with the best I've ever scored so I winded myself actually when I put ball down. I was uh, you know you, if you're not cheating you're not trying wagon is that that rule in it? Great try by Aidy Gardner there, putting us back in the lead. I'm not feeling too confident though when I've seen how many subs they've got. They've got more subs than the Baltimore Colts, mate. I thought this was uh, RL, not NFL.
hanging out my ass on the uh, wing. Uh, obviously, I wasn't in the middle, thank God, and it just Platy, I was lucky that Platy just sort of popped it up to me. I was happened to be in the right place for the right time, but um, yeah, I don't think my missus is going to be too happy. I've torn my bicep, I've got old scissors tomorrow, so I don't know I'm going to do that, but last game ever, so I might as well put myself through it. Well, hopefully the final score will be us winning. Um, I think they're going to come back into it. They're just starting to ramp up a little bit now. Um, it was all quite nicey nicely for the first 10 minutes, and then uh, it started to get a bit, a bit feisty, so I'm expecting it to sort of ramp up a bit more in the second half. Lack of, lack of respect for the ball, really. Just uh, us as a team as you keep turning it over. I've had a couple there. Um, just trying to force the offload. Um, and that's probably been the difference. Their offloads are paying off for them. Um, and it's stressing our line out and just making us all men a bit tired. So we, um, we need to clean up as our game and, and just rip into them and, and uh, try and get some field position. Final score, a win for us. I don't care what score it is, but a win. We need a win. Good, but uh, I don't think the old hips held up too well. Uh, just uh, it's good to get out there with all the they had some legends though, and uh, obviously get a good crack out. But uh, yeah, Hardman there went over. Just I think it was a bit of a ricochet, bit of a bounce off about three legs. But uh, take it. I think we're uh, hopefully stick it like this, run away with it now. <laughs> Having an unbelievable turnout, um, fantastic turnout from the players. Obviously, some uh, world-class players throughout the probably last couple of decades, and uh, you know, unbelievable for the Leeds fans and and all the rugby community to come out and support me and Jonesy, so it's a, it's a pleasure to share the game with Jonesy, a, a fellow back row who's played you know, our, our um, careers have mirrored each other for, for probably 10, 15 years, so it's really nice to share the game with Jonesy, and you know, what a credit to uh, Leeds is, you know, 20 years service to one club is an unbelievable feat. The lungs are what they used to be, <laughs> Barry hasn't changed much. No, it's um, certainly a test, that is for sure. You, uh, your head wants to get... Well, your legs can't, unfortunately. Yeah, no, it's got some Roy Keynes out there, yeah. It's, um, Watch has come on and killed us, and, and Jordan James looks like he's still playing, so... And I've just come back from a week in Mallorca, and I think you can tell. Uh, Ryan Bailey just scored, he, uh, he posted my ball, took it over. Over the line, uh, he's carrying about 20 kilos. I think they're helping us favour. Best game in the world. <laughs> Until 10 minutes after it, in the morning, you, ah, yeah, that's and you and your finger, what, pointing east, west, yeah, east, south? Yeah, mate. I'll go for an X-ray later. I'll see you in a &E. anyway, we <laughs> oh, in I'll we join you. I think we've, we've sort of um, played a few mind games with, like, name less subs, and they've just named a really strong team, and I think they've come with a bit too much cockiness. It's, it's like a V1 of... Uh, St. Helens and Warrington in Challenge Cup final. <laughs> so, I think I'm on here. My knees. That's it. It's been all right. Wish I got a little bit more ball, but yeah, pulled my calf in the first half and now pull my groin. So, good night. Yeah, good night overall. <laughs> Endo, I told you I'd bend you in two. I'm coming for your hour league now. Watch out, brother. <laughs> Nine minutes to go. Low Campbell's just got a, under the pause. Uh, 20 points to 18. Let's get on and do this. Seven seconds left, and Lee Brees has just kicked a great one point to the trademark from the, uh, the magician. Uh, it's, that should be time now. It's on zero. It's not gone ten. <laughs> I think that's the game. Yes, we've won. We've won. Yorkshire 18, Lancashire 21. Just moving the quick forward. 
first time you've played? Yeah, it is, yeah. First time yeah, I've played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, there you go. There we go, son. <laughs> tough, tough game, that. It was uh, enjoyable, but tough, you know. Uh, some, some great spirit out there, and uh, just done gone at the end. Tremendous, you know, I say, great, great spirit, you know, some great players here, and I think played the right way as well. You know, there, there's no there's no making any bones about it, we, we retired for a reason. What a fitting way to end a Lee Brea's drop goal. <laughs> you could have had a better game than that, it was brilliant, and when you're back end of a Yorkshire v Lancashire, four minutes to go, you want it to be 18-20. It, it, it was competitive. It was competitive. Really course. competitive. And Lee Brea's, in usual fashion, dropped a goal just to rub the salt in. But my favourite moment of the game was when Lee Brees invited a young lad out at crowd to kick one at goals. And that just for me sums up what this is all about. Wonderful occasion. Lancashire got the win. I'm not happy about that. But everything else, mate, 99% perfect, Timo. Mate, absolutely outstanding. A big thanks to all the players, uh, to Sports Funding, to everyone who came together to make it happen. It's been a great night. Uh, for the fans, a great night for the players and a great night for Rugby League. Jonesy, you man crushed there, Paul Sculfop, celebrating <laughs> with Lee Breers at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, I need to give him a ring. I think he, you said he broke his skate Yeah, he point. broke his skate for his, his bone, eh? But he's that hard, isn't he? That yeah. much, like, nobody even noticed. He didn't make any fuss at all. So right, a couple of <coughs> five questions, boys, uh, to get to know you a bit better. So what was your first car? How much did it cost? Uh, mine was a Hillman Hunter, I think. It would be about... Maybe six hundred dollars or something like that. <laughs> Just to drive it to school with no license. <laughs> <laughs> Driving with no license, that that's runs a key, in Kiwi culture. Key thing, <laughs> what about you, bro? Uh, I got an Audi. Is that obviously Ooh. flash? Yeah, I was a bit lucky, but I didn't get my license till I was like mid twenties. Obviously, I was like this guy drive with no license, but uh, wasn't my car. It was my ex's. So yeah, but my first car that I owned was an Audi. So. That's nice. when I got my list, license. What's your go-to karaoke song? You know, I've been a bit of fun. You wanna have a sing song at end at night? What's your go-to song? Oh, mine's uh, any Elvis number, I think. Oh. Fools Rush In or something like that. Nice. You've got a few Elvis costumes at home, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi bar, you've seen them, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi Elvis. <laughs> What's yours? Candy shop, 50 cent. 50 yeah. cent, yes. Yes. Favourite holiday destination? I've just been to mine. Um, he, he thinks it's me caravan, but it's not, <laughs> not there. <laughs> uh, I've just been to Dubai. Um, amazing place. I like me cruises, but uh, Mrs. wants to uh, keep going back to Dubai now. But It's, it's unreal, it's, isn't it? It's expensive, but it's a just different different class. There's a vice president now, but she it's <laughs> easy, isn't it? How am I going to pay for it? Sell these. You're <laughs> <laughs> getting any money for it. That's the last thing. But you wrong. Favourite holiday destination? Um, what was it? Barcelona. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love Barcelona. Mate, it's, it, best of luck to you both this year in playoffs. I know what it means to you to get up, and it's going to be an interesting playoffs. It's going to be tough for all the teams there, but I really mean it. Good luck, and uh, we're covering all the League One playoffs on the Our League app, so. Make sure you're downloading the Our League app and uh, and following their progress. Jonesy, what, two weeks ago, mate? Two weeks ago. I'm not on social media, but uh, I do see sometimes some nice things people say, and I just want to thank everybody for all the support as well. I, I feel like I haven't got the voice all the time to say thanks and give you a thumbs up, so those people that I've got behind me through the thick and the thin as well, You've been outstanding and I really appreciate it. I don't know if you saw that dividend report uh, that the RFL commissioned recently, done by Manchester Metropolitan University. It was, it was just to look at the, the, social, the social and economic effects of rugby league within its core communities. And it was amazing to me in that it just reminded me that lads like myself from working class backgrounds in places like Bramley or whether in Brands Home and all, yeah. have a chance to go on a wonderful journey. And mm. I've done that, mate. I've played mm. at Wembley's, I've played at Old Trafford. I've met some wonderful people from all over the world. I've traveled the world. I've been to Papua New Guinea. I'm going back to Papua New Guinea. It's been a great journey, mate. And I couldn't have done it without Rugby League. Rugby League's the greatest game. And I uh, thank everybody who plays their little part in it. Listen, I, I just think, um, it shouldn't be underestimated what you've done for that club. You've been amazing. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Boys, come at last. You to sign the table. Find it. Find a little white spot. Last thing uh, on the show today is your chance to win. It's a really special couple of competitions courtesy of Bachelors Mushy Peas. Team treat. Win 20 tickets for an amateur team to go to a playoff game. All you've got to do is fill the form in on rugbym.co.uk. And there's also thank you coach, and this is a really special one where you get to nominate 
your coach, someone in an amateur club who's done an amazing job this year for whatever reason, uh, nominate them, they can win six hospitality tickets to a playoff game of your choice. Absolutely amazing. Competitions from Bachelors Mushy Peas. Check them out on rugbym.co.uk and we'll see you next week when on the sofa, Luke Gale from Cast Tigers. See you next week. Good night and God bless. Oh,